Hey everybody, Sam here. And Angela, and welcome to our channel. Welcome back to the next video in the series of us building our pole barn, outdoor structure, honestly, tractor and outdoor equipment shed on our property. In this video, we are gonna pick up where we left off and fill up these tubes with concrete. Sounds pretty easy. <laughs> Well, we got ourselves a new tool here. Yep, we decided to buy a concrete mixer because with 150 bags mixing by hand for this project, yeah, yikes. Need a little electric help here, don't we? I know what you're thinking, and it's okay. Angela knows that I bought this tool. Actually, it was Angela that pushed to get it. We've got here a big white cardboard box, weighs about 96 pounds, and it's supposed to contain a concrete or cement mixer. Yeah, we got a tool just for this job, but for other jobs we have planned as well. Let's go ahead and get this unbox assembled and get this party started, which is today, concrete pour day, for our pole barn slash carport slash outdoor structure build palooza. Well, this guy took pretty much an hour solid to assemble. Fun, but it should be a huge time saver, labor saver, and hopefully I will just love it here on out. All right, I've got all the tools together. My help is out here, homeschool is done. So we're going to start mixing some concrete. I have the mixer sit over here where I think it'll be able to dump from the mixer straight into the tube form. We'll see. Uh, we're total amateurs at this using a power mixer. So I'm just gonna sit you guys over here, be able to see stuff. But uh, we're gonna learn, and you guys can enjoy the show. <laughs> and then uh, when we kind of get the hang of it, if we think of any cool tips or tricks, you know us. We will let you know in on the secrets. And otherwise, let's go. So as we get going, we are learning the process. But if you guys will stick with us. Later in the video, I show you the complete concrete setup that I found that works for us. Something that is efficient for a one guy operation and how we mix everything and a little more instructional. It's going to take us some time to learn. We do learn it and then we share with you guys what we do learn a little bit later in the video.
as you guys can tell we are in shade time now we were absolutely getting fried so we quit had a siesta Angela went to the grocery store I entertained the boys I did some customer orders in the workshop and now we're back when it is much probably 20 degrees cooler it feels like yeah yeah so so what we're going to do is something that Angela just mentioned and she doesn't oh, really? know that I had the same idea we're gonna try just mixing some concrete old-fashioned in the wheelbarrow so it's not I don't know we get to kind of skip a step of sloshing it into something else how terrible though we bought a concrete mixer we can sell it or something if needed oh uh, well hey if nothing else let's do it the manual way we won't we won't say anything we'll hold judgment and say whether or not you need to buy a mixer and uh, we'll try our best to learn a lesson teach a lesson and share an experience mm -hmm. all right let's get going <laughs> Well guys, as you're going to see here, we quickly ditched the wheelbarrow and we decided, you know what, the concrete mixer wasn't a bad idea. So you're going to see us start to use it again. But remember, if you stick with me here on the video, coming up here in just a minute or two, I actually do take you through the process, at least Sam's way, of how I mix everything, have everything set up, and a little more in-depth knowledge sharing session once I get the hang of things. It's also worth mentioning, I don't believe I go into details in the video, but we are putting rebar in every single one of these footers and pier pours. Anywhere from two to four sticks of half inch diameter rebar gets put in, depending upon the height and length. So while I don't cover it in detail, there is absolutely rebar placed in every single one of these. It's just kind of one of those things that I got busy and forgot to do a really in-depth show and tell on. Oops, stop. Biggest wasp I've ever seen. I think the last place we left you guys off as far as filming was actually the night before last when we were out here in the evening pouring and working more on concrete work all the way up until dark. We finished out what we could that night, came back the next morning. I came out here by myself and worked while Angela was doing homeschool and tried to do that early in the morning. Worked up until about one o'clock or so and called it quits for the heat of the day. I was able to go through 54 bags of concrete by myself and do an additional five tubes or concrete piers which was pretty good progress, especially just by yourself. Yesterday evening, say around 6.30 or 7 o'clock in the evening when this whole area was shaded, we all came back out here again, did the whole family fun of concrete work, and uh, none of us felt like running a camera, so we just left it out. But the same process was just repeated over and over. Uh, we'd mix the concrete, pour it in the tubes, add the rebar we needed, fill it up, float it off, and move on to the next. Last night we worked beyond dark. We were out here with flashlights and we were really, really, really trying to get it done, but we just didn't get it done. Once I saw that we were absolutely not going to finish, I kind of changed tactic. Instead of focusing on one pier at a time, I went ahead and had us all do the last three, the ones that are absolutely the tallest, get them filled in the bottom enough to go ahead and put rebar into and it also helps to lock in the concrete tube form a little bit. That way, now the tube forms are completely locked in place. They are plumbed on the sides and level on the top. And I don't have to worry about trying to juggle, keeping them still, keeping them placed correctly, as I'm also filling everything in myself. All right, you're over here at Concrete Station. I'm gonna treat you as if you're just a innocent standing bystander. <laughs> Not helping, just watching somebody work. That's all right, that's what you're here for. I got my station here. Concrete is right here on the tractor, mixer, I have a water hose right here hooked on the pallet forks, easy access for me, a utility knife to cut open the bags of concrete, and then number one most important thing is this box fan you hear running. It's not only down there to keep me nice and cool and easy breezy cover girl, it's also really most important to keep that concrete dust out of the area and out of my nose and lungs. The stuff is really gnarly, you don't want to breathe it in 
Sure, you could say I should have a mask on, but it's 95 degrees and uh, I would just pass out from a heat stroke if I had a mask on. So, box fan, best thing I can do. We're rocking chicken chicken. Let's get going. So I'm gonna cut open the bag. I always like to cut up the bags right across the middle, like the belly of the bag. Take it over, karate chop it, plop it in the mixer, and then dump out at least two in there before I turn on the mixer. Even though that mixer's instructions say, don't add anything unless it's running, Good luck trying to do that, which we tried to do the first couple times, and that was a mess. They just pretty much tell you that so you don't overload the motor. So I'm able to put two of these 60-pound bags in there, start it up, and then spray it, and it's fine. It's not killing the motor. I don't feel like it's taxing anything. The really great thing about this mixer is you're able to see as it goes, add some water, wait, let it mix a while, add some more as you need it. When we first started, <laughs> we made our stuff way too wet. We were making soup, not concrete. So some of the forms definitely reflect that. But I learned that the easiest way is to add a little bit of water, let it mix for a while, then add more as you need. It sounds completely logical now, but it might not be something you think of in the moment. You may think, oh my gosh, I gotta go, I gotta hurry, hurry, hurry. You're fine. Slow down, calm down, Sam, relax, it's okay. Concrete's not gonna set up by the time you get your stuff done. Another thing is, if you need to, let's say, go refill your pallet with concrete because you're out, throw a bag in there, let it mix, go do that. Go load up more concrete, it's fine, it's not gonna do anything crazy. Just keep it going, just like a mixing truck on the road. Come back and then add it up. I'm able to fit three 60-pound bags of concrete in this mixer before it really gets too full. So that's a sweet spot for this one. Again, your mileage may vary depending on the size bags you use or the mixer you get. But for us, three pounds is the sweet spot. No, no, no. Three bags is the sweet spot. We have our concrete mixed up. This two form is too tall to pour in with the wheelbarrow, so I'm using a shovel. Just gonna scoop it in, plop and drop, fill it up. That worked out perfectly. The three bags are 180 pounds of concrete. Filled up the tube. Yes, it is definitely overfilled. I'm gonna let it sit there for a little bit, let it kind of settle. The water work its way up. It gives things 
time to settle down, then I'll come back and float this. Meanwhile, it's back to mixing the next batch. Until I get all three bags put in here, I purposely mix it drier than it needs to be. That way it kind of sticks to the back, doesn't spill out the front, and it's not just soupy as I plop another bag in and end up getting splashed to death. That's a lesson I learned the hard way. I'm gonna try my best. I don't know if the camera will show this. But see how it's kind of rocky and clumpy? You can still hear the kind of grittiness and graininess kind of plop and drop. It's still too dry. I'll give it a minute or two, let it get some moisture work around it, and then I'll add a little bit of water. So for me, this is the consistency that I've found that I like and seems to work best. It is still very fluid, but it's not soupy. There is no visible water puddles. It's not splashing on me, but it is still moving around very well. I'm not a concreteologist. I can't tell you exactly what slump and how to calculate that. I don't even know if you even do that in the field. But this is the consistency I've been going for with the mixture, and it seems to be working fine so far. Alright, now I'm ready to float this. Just gonna jiggle it a little bit. Basically what you want to do is work the rocks and aggregate down lower and bring that nice smooth slurry up to the top for your smooth finish. All right, once I've got it kind of worked to where I've got the smooth stuff up top, then I'll start to actually screed off the excess and float it smooth.
well we have all of our tools cleaned up and obviously you can see it's a little bit later in the day we've cooled off and honestly some rain's coming in so what i have done other than clean up is also put trash bags over the three form tubes that i did today so that one down there and then these two right here i i don't think the rain would probably mess with it because it's been several hours since they were poured but i don't want to risk it at this point I will say this, as you look at the footage here, you will see that as the concrete has cured, it has sunken and shrunk below the tops of those tubes. Yes, those cardboard form tubes that we spent so much time laser leveling, uh, the concrete's not flush with them, or not level. So, I need to decide if that's going to be an issue or not. I honestly don't know. If I look at them, I mean, not all of them shrunk at the same rate. I'm sure that had something to do with the water mixture or the percentage or ratio of water to concrete mix. So I don't know what to do. We do need these leveled for the project to continue. So I can either get really, really picky, maybe skim coat these with something, or just cut myself some shims and plates and build from there. I'll scratch my noggin and see what I come up with. Unfortunately, the way it goes, I will have already addressed this solution or come up with something probably before I get the time to edit all of this, schedule and post it on our channel. So uh, leave us a comment what you would do and then we'll see what I end up doing. It's not me being uh, hoity-toity or anything. It's just the way it usually goes with reality timeline and then YouTube timeline. My thoughts are I could skim coat it with something. I don't know if I should do more concrete on this. I really worry about the two layers adhering to each other. Or I could just plan on getting several different metal shims or plates or something like that to make up the difference. I also don't know how far off they are from each other until I pull the concrete tube forms off, which I still want to wait another day or two at least until we start taking those off. So who knows, maybe I am thinking I have a worse issue than I do and when I pull the cardboard off, it all looks great. Not sure, but we'll see. Well, it took three days worth of work, but we are finally, finally done. Yay! I counted it up and we ended up using 125 60 pound bags of concrete mix for 18 footers, footers slash piers. It's a lot. It is. And I uh, think I moved every single one of those except for maybe one. Elijah moved from the Tried. pallet to the tractor and he said, nope, I'm good. Well, seeing as how he's barely 90 pounds and the thing weighs 60 pounds, that's okay. <laughs> True. Yeah, he did good. So, all in all, the project, I guess, went smoothly. We didn't have any tube forms blow out on us. Thankfully. We only knocked over one, okay, we by me, only knocked over one wheelbarrow load of concrete. Uh, so, I mean, hey, for a couple of amateurs doing this in the morning until about to have a heat stroke and come out at night and until we get... With eaten flashlights. alive by mosquitoes yeah. and flashlights. Yeah, not too bad, I guess. I would say that the mixer that we got was very much needed. At first, we're kind of like, no, we can mix it in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> we can do that, no big deal. But then we decided it was a lot quicker to do it that way. Yeah, I think getting comfortable with the machine itself and loading it with it off instead of following the sticker instructions about loading it with it on make a world of difference. Yes. I say that because I'm not one that had to actually load it. Hey, it went pretty good. I mean, it was not easy. This was not an easy job, but it had to be done. You got to mm -hmm. have a level foundation for any kind of structure you build. And while this may seem very, very confusing, it will make sense as the progress goes on. Promise. I have said the term pole barn. I probably should not have been saying that term. That's all the hints I'm going to drop for right now. Hmm. Well guys, thanks for coming along as we played with some concrete. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next time on the homestead. See you guys.